So, you know, you graduate high school and, you know, you went to the ceremony and, you know, you about to transition to a new part of your life, you know, after high school, which is a big jump for a lot of people. Yeah. And did you have anything that was going on? What was going on during that time of your life when you graduated from high school? Uh, when I graduated from high school to... Like, um, not now, but like, what, what happened like when you graduated? Like, what was the... Uh, what were you going through, you know? You know, you're going through a new step in life, going through, going about to go to college or about to go work. You know, what was going on in your life at that time when you graduated? Um, well... It was um, nothing real major, just just adjusting to high, uh, the end of my high school days, getting ready to um, put on that cap and gown, um, saying goodbye to high school and on to college. But one thing I did learn right away is that college is very expensive. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, <laughs> like, I wouldn't know about that. <laughs> yeah. Like, like it, and to scrounge up like anything you can just to be accepted at a certain school. Yeah. In a short amount of time. That's got to be hard for anybody. Yeah. Uh, I had some things that I went through. A lot of people don't know, but um, college is, is hard. Like it's not, it's not hard. But I'm saying, like what you said, you got to pick up whatever you have and try to go to the school is an adjustment. Yeah. So, what was like life for you? What type type of adjustments did you have to make during that time? Well, one of them was um, uh, being okay with not going to class because there is some things that will have you well they they have you like say okay you gotta go to this class no matter what but it's sometimes say like you, you don't really need it um like taking uh, chemistry and whatnot and just choosing, just choosing the right, ma right major for you in general. And I thought journalism, that's the major I end up cho choosing. Okay. I thought that was like the right major for me. I, I still think it is. I just think the, the classes mixed up with the major was kind of questionable at best. Like chemistry and so you taking these other classes, you felt like it wasn't about your major. No. It it's wasn't. about, you know, what the university it was money filler, you know. So I agree with you on that mm -hmm. in a way because I didn't understand that either when I first went and I had to figure it out right. really quickly <laughs> that this is a business. Yeah. And um, it should be more about, like, what you're about. If you're going to school for a journalism, it should be a school just specifically for me being that. Yeah. And college does not offer that. Mm -hmm. And this is why, you know, I'm creating, you know, my own university. Not like a literal university, but where I'm teaching people how to get business, how to, you know, make your own uh, music, videos. Like, it's going to be the Dongo University, and you're going to learn what you want to learn. Like, yeah. if you want to learn from me what I do, then you learn from what I do. Right. And I feel like that would, that would erase the gap because I always wanted to educate people properly because I feel like they don't really understand, like, they don't understand what they're, they don't even know what they're doing half the time. Right. So, uh, I understand what you say when you say, I want to go to school for, to write or to draw or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's what you want to go to school for. Right. So, that's what probably made you feel that way. Mm -hmm. That you didn't have a chance to experience like what you wanted. I want to just go for journalism. That's it. But that's not how it is. <laughs> right. It's, but it's not. So the way I think you should try to combat that is 
Okay, I'm just going to make my own. Okay, y'all don't want to believe. Like, that's the route I had to go to, even though I had all that education. Mm. But, you know, maybe you might want to think about that. Yeah. Sometimes you got to go outside the box. Yeah, that's true. God made you who you are. Mm -hmm. And you're unique. Yeah. And your message is unique. But, you know, it's just we got to do our, own, our on our own sometimes. Yeah. So. And um, it's, you, you don't need people, you don't need people to follow your vision like right away. You just need that one person that believes in you and it can go on from there. Yeah. Like you saw the jump I had. Yeah. Fitness, acting, acting, stunts. Stunts, music, music. The brand always been there, but the brand really me focus on the brand. Film, you seen it, kind of go its way. The same thing with you. Now you going on your journey that way. Yeah. And one person that believe in you will change your life. And my whole life, I even had a lot of people doubt me. So I know you had it. Everyone has them, but it's how you put that, but put that to the side and focus on. Okay, it don't matter what they say. That one person that believes in our brand is there. It's someone out there, like you said. So, yeah. so I know you mentioned your father at the time had some issues mm -hmm. at home. Yeah. What was going on that affected you in your life? Like, what was something that was going on at home? Well, um, my dad is kind of like you, uh, where... He wanted to be his own man. He wanted to be his own boss. And he started he started thinking about that when he was uh, working at a drywall company in Columbus. Okay. Excuse me. But um, once, once he got let go from there, after um, suffering a stroke. Okay. When did um, he suffer that? What year was that? Um, I would have to say several years ago. I can't remember what year right now. It's okay. probably like 2004 or five. Okay, like years before you graduated. Yeah. Okay, okay, go ahead. Yeah. Um, once he uh, suffered that stroke, he had to reteach himself everything. How to eat, how to walk, how to talk, all that. And um, did that affect you? Him going through that had to affect you a little. Oh yeah, I mean yeah. Um, that I would had to help him. Okay. Reteach him like everything. Okay. And um, there were some ups, there were some downs, but it was always a progress. And I felt like he was getting better. Each and every day. Okay. So, him going through that stroke in 2004 or 5, whatever, it was around that time. Mm -hmm. And when you graduated, and off camera you mentioned something happened at home that he did. And if you could share, you know, what it is exactly, what happened, and, you know, what happened that day mm -hmm. at the house, if you can share it. Yeah, well... I mean, unfortunately, I still remember it like this yesterday. But um, it was this one day upstairs. Oh, In your house? Not, yeah. Okay. Not not upstairs, downstairs. Okay. I was listening to music. 50 Cent? I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, but go ahead. Go ahead. I was listening to music, <laughs> and um, I take my headphones off. And I hear somebody screaming up, okay. upstairs, like uh, like it was a panic type scream. Right. I go upstairs. I turn out. It turns out it was my mom screaming, um, just like in, in a straight panic. Didn't know what to do. It was just crying. And I go upstairs. I look in the room and. It turns out that my dad shot himself in the head. 
Okay. And dramatic. Yeah, very, very. Uh, so you saw blood everywhere. Uh, there, there was blood on the floor. Yeah. Um, they even had to cut out that part of the, of the uh, carpet. Okay. Um, what, what did you feel though, like when you saw like? I was shocked. I didn't know he was that depressed in that kind of way. But looking at everything he's been through, I'm not saying I agree with him for doing that, but I can see why. Okay, okay. So after that happened, you know, your life obviously um, changed. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. What like what changed and how did you stay inspired to continue to do you know build on your journalism and you love music you doing the Twitter stuff how did you handle like that problem that you were going through with your dad and to like still having to post about the game like how did you deal with that? Um, just just um, having tele television. Just staying focused, staying headstrong, knowing that <clears throat> he's not in the right state of state of mind ever since then. But just knowing that I really can't stop what I'm doing. I'm doing this like every single day. I know there's people out there supporting me on doing it. Um, and just, I just do it for them in that aspect. No gotcha. Matter. As long as they support me, I got them. Okay, okay. So, to talk about, you know, you know, your brand and your, your mission on social media, what's something that you love doing about that? Like, what is something you love, like, about going on there and making that post and people interacting, what do you love about it? The entertainment. I just love the entertainment off of it. Like, Twitter can be a bad place at times, it can be a negative place, um, but that's for like, people who just uh, have something behind the scenes. Okay. That, that we don't know about. But I just post Whenever I'm not suspended. <laughs> How do you get suspended? I never got suspended on Twitter, so I don't... I never got suspended at all. I don't know what that means. Okay. Uh, I mean, I've gotten multiple suspensions off of um, copyright claims. But <laughs> the thing is, I'm not doing it for the money. I'm doing it for, like, the entertainment to get the reaction from my followers. Okay. Who is looking at it, and whether it's positive, negative, funny, uh, a little bit crossing the line or whatnot, I welcome all of it. So have you ever have you ever been through like Twitter arguments? Oh, of course, yeah. Like <laughs> I've been on it for seven years, so I've argued with. What was one of the ones you could share? That was like the okay. This one is like. Y'all just, like, you having fun, but like, it's like a, no one's backing down type thing. Have you had one like that? Oh, like, yeah. Uh, I've had a few with um, this one guy named Nate. Uh, I think his name is Nate <laughs> underscore so sway B24. Y'all still argue to this day? Uh, we've calmed down a bit since then, but he's also a big Kobe fan, just like you. <laughs> <laughs> You can't get away from them, can you? Oh, no. <laughs> They're everywhere. You can't get away from them. Even in Ohio. But I'm a true, like, deep, like, that's my man type. Like, I don't just, it ain't, it's deeper than just the hooping for me. Yeah. But go ahead. So what was the argument about, about with him? Well. Kobe? Well, it, it, it was, surprisingly, it wasn't about him. It's about LeBron. Okay. Like, I just... I don't see like anything, anything he tweets about LeBron is like 
nothing real positive about about him, whether it is off or on the court. Like, so you think he crossed the line? Well, not. I don't think it is crossing the line. I just think give credit where it's due. Like, he worked extreme. Even though he's extremely talented, extremely gifted, blessed, all that, he's worked hard to get to where he is. Yeah, he did. And I just think um, there's not many that come every day like him. No. No. So I I figured en- enjoy whatever time he has left in the NBA. He's been there 16 years. Who knows how long? He's Probably 45 been. more years. Yeah. Uh, at a high level. Yeah, at, at a high level. Just enjoy it, cause um, it's not too, not too many. Uh, you can throw that finals record out the window. He's got three. That's all that matters to me. I would like to see him get a couple more before he's done. And he's on my team now. Yes. So I have to. Yeah. <laughs> I, and I know it's hard for for some <laughs> to, to be on his side after arguing against him for so many years. Right. But if you want that Lakers franchise to be back to what it was before, <laughs> you have to root for him. Yeah. I I mean, obviously, I root for him. Um, I think he's one of the most um, gifted athletes ever in in, in any sport. And he's uh, on the social side of issues, and he's the best at it. And, yeah, he is. And he's from Northeast Ohio, so mm-hmm. I really can't not knock this man. And I and I and I am inspired by him. He's a muse of mine. It might not be the muse that I consider my main muses, but he's up there. Yeah. And I really, you know, um, in order that he came from our area, he gave a kid like me and you a chance to say that we can make it from uh, Youngstown and Northeast Ohio, which is, uh, you know how it is. Yeah. You know, so, um, you know, I'm blessed that he gave us a, a good a reason to shine and have a reason to be proud of being from Ohio. Mm-hmm. 